Hello everybody, I'm going to do an update here, um, I've had a bit of a setback with my video in, uh, I think I last shown you when I was, when I'd made an, an error with that, um, not drilling those holes and then I riveted them on and then I found out that there were no holes to put my bolts in, I think that was my last video. Uh, since then I've done a few other bits of, of jobs on, on frame and I'll explain them in a minute but the reason I've not videoed them is because my me, um, me battery charger on my video recorder packed up and I've had to wait for another one uh, coming to be able to charge my battery up so I've had to wait a few days for that so I've, I've been continuing just doing little bits and uh, I'll run through them now so I last saw you when I'd got this buffer beam off and I were transferring holes and riveting my angles on etc well, I've now got that fitted now and I think I've shown you how I got my stretcher levelled up inside with my vernier I think, I think that will run another video uh, I've now got my other stretchers fitted Stretch your C, stretch your D down at bottom. No, that's B. This is stretch your D. And then this other stretch your A too. Uh, the only thing that I need to mention about this back bit, I'll come to stretch your C in a minute, is if you're putting pony wheels in, you've got to put that bracket on, on stretch your D. It's where the pivot pivot goes on your pony truck. And also if you're putting a pony truck on this stretcher here, you have to reverse these angles from the downward position to the upward position so that they don't interfere with your cutout. So that's a point to watch. Now going to stretcher C, which is this one, it's, it's set at an angle. And the angle is, I don't know if you've ever noticed in my video in the past, I've had a line scribed on on both sides of frame. And that's me, I don't know if you call it the driving line or the motion line, I'm not very good with terminology yet. Anyway, we'll call it the driving or motion line. And it's got to be at right angles to that line. So the driving and motion line is from the centre of your, where your cylinder is, the centre line of your cylinder, down to the centre centre line of your driving wheels, or the centre point, I, sh I should say, and the centre point being in the middle of this cutout. So th imagine there's a point there, and a point here in the centre of your bore of your cylinder, that's the line which you must keep intact before you cut this hole out or it's more difficult to find. Right, so <clears throat> how, I've, how I've got this lined up, correctly lined up, I fastened a straight edge to me, to me uh, driving or motion line, whatever it's called, and I'm just going to put this magnet on for now. I did use clamps. So I found that line exactly with a straight edge. Then with me with me square set on that straight edge, I use my angle gauge. to get the angle like that I don't know how many degrees it is I've not I've not checked how many degrees it is I've just I'm just doing it from this line so I got my square on got my angle then I move my angle over to me can you see that I move me uh, angle gauge over to the stretcher I marked the position where the back of the stretcher's got to come and I think it was 9 sixteenths from the fixing holes. So I put a mark on my frame at 9 sixteenths. Don't take my word for that, I think it was 9 sixteenths. In fact, 
I'll just check it for you while I'm while I'm doing it. Because it's a few days back since I did that. I'll just check that dimension. Yeah, that's it, 9 sixteenths. So I measured back 9 sixteenths from my fixing holes, then I got my angle gauge set on top of my frame, and then I pushed my stretcher up to my angle gauge, clamped everything up, then I transferred my holes into my stretcher C, drilled them, tapped them, then fixed it. Right, so that's, that's my stretcher's finish finished with now and I wish I had to I wish I'd have been able to just video me doing that but I won't able to and that's that's all there is to it now so then I moved on to uh, fitting me suspension bracket let's do it in this middle on middle one right imagine me imagine me frames flat on on the surface I took some measurements and I and I got me measurement from the bottom to where the bottom of the angle's got to be and it were actually my v-block and this piece of tool steel it were, it were within a couple of thousandths of an inch so that's what I've used so I set my v-block onto the onto the base oh I can't hold it so imagine that's on my base now. I drop my angle on then. So then every all the suspension brackets are the same height then. So that's my template what I used. I clamped the suspension bracket to the frame, transferred the holes which I'd already got in my frame, drilled the holes, tapped the holes, fitted the angle. And that's how I did each one to get me exactly in position. That saved having to measure all, all, on, all of them individually. So I've now got my suspension brackets fitted. What else, what, what else were they? Um... Right, the pump. Because I'm doing a meter made and not a sweet pea, Everything's the same except I'm putting six wheels in. Right, on this sweet P, this is the, this is the pump. On the sweet P, the actual pump uses the stretcher C as its blanking plate, like that. And then it comes off the drive wheels, which would be somewhere... It, in the middle of where mine are now. So that's for the sweet P. Because I'm doing a meter made, I've altered the position of the wheels and I've got an extra setting. The overall length stayed the same. So <clears throat> I've not actually got a drawing for this. And I took I took a I've seen some pictures in a little video where I just managed to be able to see underneath one of frames and I noticed that the pump was set through this stretch of sea so I've had to like uh, do a bit of guesstimation here and I think I think I'm, I've got it correct anyway no doubt somebody will tell me if I hadn't uh, so you, you have to drill a hole in stretch of sea at the correct height where it would be fitted anyway if you if it were on a sweet pea so you drill the centre hole the diameter of your pump now the pump's got to be modified then. Imagine this flange wasn't on this pump. I've put that on. It would just be straight across with no flange on. So I've turned my, my pump down to a, determ a, a predetermined length and I've silver soldered this flange on, drilled the holes, transferred the holes into the stretcher, drilled the holes in the stretcher to accept M4 screws. Right, so the pump now fits on fits through stretcher C and 
where my axle would be, imagine that's my axle, I'll come this way a bit, the, imagine that's my axle in my, in my loco now, the same diameter as that, I've got to make, I've got to get this pump as far back to that axle without touching it and I've got also got to put my own blanking flange on the back so I've had to take an account for an extra eighth to three sixteenths of an inch so imagine that's my axle in the centre of my wheel now I don't think you can see, see full on like that is that better? Imagine that's my axle and that's my pump. When it's got the blanking plate on, it'll it'll just miss the axle by I don't know perhaps perhaps an eighth of an inch, or a, between a sixteenth and an eighth. Right, I've had to set it back that far, and and meter made owners will tell me probably tell me if I'm doing right or wrong here, but I think I'm I'm right. So. That's set back now as far as I can to the axle, which then gives room for the piston. You've then got to make sure that there's enough room for your piston and your pump to come fully out. Everything's wanting to move. To come fully out without catching the middle axle like that so that's your, that's your predetermined measurements you've got to decide once you've got your stretcher in then the actual eccentric runs off the off the next set of wheels here and it's coupled via a, a linkage which bridges over the centre axle comes over the centre axle and comes to the eccentric have you got that? So my, accent, my eccentrics on this set of wheels, this set of wheels is just in the way and you've got to bridge over it to connect to your piston, like that. Then I've just, all I've done is put three M4 screws in I've just equispaced them in, in three places, but I've put the, the t one at the top and two at the sides at the bottom. I thought that would be better because you can then get them from underneath the loco easier than doing it from top went boilers on. Right, so if you leave that hole drilled in your frame to the same size as your pump diameter, once your pump's in and your axle's in, that's it, your pump can't come out anymore and I didn't think that was good practice because if you've got to do maintenance on your pump then you've got to take all your wheels off and get your, your axle axles out or disconnect all your linkages to drop your axles so I've put a slot in the in the frame in the frame where the hole is I'll tilt the frame up so you can see. I've opened this hole out with a slot and I've gone approximately three sixteenths of an inch down and three sixteenths of an inch up where the original hole was. So, once my pump's in and, and bolted in, from underneath the loco, because the boiler will be on the top, remember, and I'm not sure how much room there is, you can get to undo these screws, and by having that slot in, you can turn the pump to its width ways, and then the pump can drop out on this slot, with this slot allowing it to drop out underneath, so you can get the pump out. Does that make sense? I think so. Well, it does to me anyway. You've just got to silver solder an extra flange on your pump if you're doing this this uh, version at Sweet Pea. Um, so that's covered my pump. 
and like I said I've just fastened it in with M4 screws same as I've used on frame Now because I've not got an actual drawing of this, the books, the book and the instructions I'm working to was for a sweet pea. I've got the drawing for the main frames of the meter made, I think I've shown you that in past, but I've not got any of these details, so uh, to my calculations that should that should be fine. If anybody knows different I'd appreciate you letting me know. Right. So that's my pump sorted. Now I'm moving on to own guides now and I've made two little jacks. Let's, let's just move. Right, I've made two little jacks. And I've fitted my own guides in position and just open these jacks up to clamp them in then I've got to get another little clamp just to clamp make sure that they clamp to this to the frame face properly and this is how I'm going to go about this I'm going to do them individually a set it a time with the jacks in mark my holes then I can drill and tap my horn guide on each one and then fit them but before I do all that I'm making sure everything's square and remember this this can supposedly be made without a, without a milling machine so it says in the book well I ain't got a milling machine anyway that I can put this frame in now and skim them on guards up I know that's the best practice to do would be to fit it in a milling machine upside down tried to work over with camera and it's a bit awkward uh, ideally what's fitting in a milling machine and just a skim taking down those own guides to, to par make them parallel well if you haven't got a milling machine you can't do that can you so we've just got to make do so I'm just like doing it like it says in the book Making sure that they're all square, all in line, etc. With a square and a straight edge. And looking at mine, just, just with my eyes anyway. I think they actually, well I think they're good enough to be honest. There's no rocking and it's on full face. So on guide, my straight edge. So you know there may be just a little bit of tittling up with a file in places for these. I'm not quite sure, but if you've if you've milled them to a thousandth of an inch like I have, milled the slots to 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 the correct dimensions. In theory, they should everything should line up, but sometimes theory don't always work, does it? So, you know, there might just be a little bit of very fine tuning to do with them before they act before you actually drill the holes. And in my case, I don't think I'm there is to any look going though to be... over camera here and it's a bit difficult. I'll have to, you know, once camera's off, get in a bit bit, bit better position to see this, but just looking just looking now from behind camera I'm eyeballing that that up and I think it's pretty spot on to be honest but I'm not saying that it is it, there might be just a bit of fine tuning to do and you'll have to just accept that as you go along if you've not got a milling machine to fine tune those own guides so that they're dead parallel uh, so I'm going to continue with them own guides now and uh, like I said before, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't get to do video in them. 
doing each of these individual stages, which I've just shown you all in one lump. But there you go, my camera won't work, and so that were it. So I'll sign off for now then, and uh, I'll do another update as and when I get a bit further with these horn guards. And if there's any any tips or important bits to show you, I'll come back to it. So I'll catch you on my next video then. Bye for now.